Did you know that there are technically two game modes of American Truck Simulator? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a career or campaign mode, and later on, I'm going to show you how to set up a sandbox or more creative mode. Hello, my name is Prime, and today I'm going to show you how to set up American Truck Simulator to be a campaign mode, which is the default way of playing American Truck Simulator. And using a free mod from the Steam Workshop, I'll show you how to create a more creative version or sandbox version. I will also take a closer look at some of the controls and different gameplay features that help enhance each of those different pathways. This is part two of my Getting Started with American Truck Simulator series. So if you missed part one, it will be up in the card above, and there is also the series playlist for the prime how-tos down in the description. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to comment down below. Also, if you want to skip certain parts or focus in on certain areas, there are chapters on this video before we get into the play styles. Let's head down to options and we're going to look through some of the gameplay functions and take this time to briefly go over some of the things that you want to choose depending on how you want to play American Truck Simulator. You can change this at any point. Nothing is set in stone. You just come back to the gameplay section within settings. But some of these different simulation aspects ultimately gauge on where on the scale between more arcade fun versus true simulator your save lies. I'm currently working on an ultimate settings and controls guide, so I won't go through everything here here and explain it what it does specifically but i will focus on the crucial things that are needed to get you on your way and to help either make things easier or curve it to your liking. The top two check boxes here in the game settings are arguably the most important in choosing between the simulation side and the more arcade fun side. The top line is fatigue simulation, which is for the rest or how tired your driver gets. If you leave this selected after a certain amount of time, you must find a rest stop and sleep. If not, you will start getting fines. If you turn this off, however, you are not required to sleep. Traffic offense is quite explicit in its meaning. If you turn this off, you will not get any fines or infractions for anything you do wrong. Turning this off truly makes it more of an arcade style where you can run around and do whatever you want. Another important section is right down here with the sliders being the random road events and detours. Random road events are things that you will notice on the side of the road. Detours, on the other hand, is the major impact between simulation and arcade. Turning this all the way down will mean that you no longer have to take, well, a detour if a certain exit or section of road is closed. That is what detours do in American Truck Simulator. Often a highway exit or section of road is closed and you must take a detour, sometimes a very long detour around that area. Even for my simulation users, I would recommend having this a little bit lower than default, if not a significant amount. I run mine actually just within the first third here. I never take it above that. The last one that I would say is more crucial in the game settings is the show blockers. Those are the nice yellow X's where you cannot drive or where the map does not extend. Due to my questionable navigation skills, I have been able to just plow straight into these invisible barriers. I can confirm they are still there and definitely don't feel good when you hit them. If you want a more realistic experience without giant floating X's around the map, highly recommend turning this off. If you're not as comfortable with navigating around the world, leave it on. Finally, in truck settings, there are just a few key areas here that you want to keep an eye on. Starting off, we have truck stability. Having it all the way up, your truck will most likely never tip over or it will take a lot of effort to tip it over. Same with trailer stability. Drive shaft torque is one of the new elements that came in not too long ago, at least as of recording this video. And it simulates, well, the torque coming from the drive shaft within the truck, and it causes the body of the truck to roll. Turning this up and down is just based on personal preference, and if you want to have the interior cam mainly, of the truck being more lively. Suspension stiffness is another one. Having it more stiff versus soft will affect body roll. Once again, more on the simulation side of things, either way. And advanced trailer coupling. Having this enabled means that you must reverse to your trailers to connect to them, if you own your own truck, that is. The truck speed limiter. Personally speaking, I leave this off no matter which gameplay style I'm going for, but if you would like your truck to have a speed limiter in it, feel free to enable it. 
All right, now that we've got the settings sorted, let's get started first with the campaign mode or career mode, depending on how you want to say it. This is the default way of playing American Truck Simulator and really how the game is designed to be played. The goal of the career mode is to work your way from being a higher driver up to owning your own transportation empire. Ultimately, this means that you have to be very careful about your money expenditure and also your time spent. Now, American Truck Simulator does a very good job at giving you prompts to help progress you through your career, and those come in the form of email. So if you click down at the email, and there'll be a little number indicator if you've got a new email. As we progress, you will see new things come up in here, including bank loans and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and get started with a quick job here and get some extra money so we can continue to grow our company. So let's go ahead and select Reading because that's where we are. And I recommend selecting price as the top. So it will go highest to lowest. That way you're getting the most money possible. So why don't we take these sawdust panels from Reading to Medford, Oregon. And it looks like we'll be driving a Mac Anthem today. The offer expires in two and a half hours. Keep that in mind. It's based off of in-game time for the quick job and cargo market and freight market, which we'll get into at later dates. So let's go ahead and take the job and get on the road. Once loaded, you'll be sat in your Mac Anthem. If you remember from episode one, if you hit F4, you can control the seat adjustment. That way you can see the mirror. Now, when you're doing quick jobs, you're going to have to do this more frequently. But when you do get your own truck, your settings will save for that truck. So it makes life a lot easier. Looks like we're all loaded up with the Mac Anthem, and I'll see you when we get close to our delivery point. All right, so we have made it to Medford. It's been a pretty good delivery so far. And uh, we're just waiting for the light here. And we're just around the corner from our drop-off spot. But decided not to show the whole delivery because, well, we're doing a tutorial here. And there's no point watching a, well, slightly time-consuming delivery. It's not crazy time-consuming. But these deliveries do take time. And you want to drive appropriately depending on the style you're going for. If you want to go simulation, obviously you're not going to go crazy on the driving. And uh, if you're going to go more of the arcade route, well then have some fun. It does not matter. This is a simulator after all. There is no right and wrong, but it's all personal preference in what you're going for. Obviously I'm just doing this a bit more realistic here, uh, just because I can. And uh, we're just going to have some fun here, drop off, and I will show you uh, the reversing process. Because last time in the first look, um, in our first delivery, or part one, I guess I should say, I just did a the middle ground drive into the spot. This time I'll show you reversing the truck and a little some tips and tricks that I've learned uh, from doing that. Obviously, I am not a professional whatsoever. I, I do not drive transport trucks for a living. But I have had plenty of people give me recommendations over the years of do covering American Truck Simulator and I've had a bit of practice. So let's go ahead and hit enter on the spot here and we're going to go, where do you need it? It will give us 40 XP bonus, which will be very handy to try and level up. And it looks like it's going to be just ahead of us here. The goal when reversing and a good tip to have is to make it a non-blindside reverse. Well, you may ask Prime, what is a non-blindside reverse? A blindside reverse is when you are trying to back up a trailer and going off of your opposite side of where you're sitting. So for my case, because it is this is a left-hand drive vehicle, my right-hand side, where actually in fairness, this delivery so far is kind of set up to be I will be doing a blindside reverse. The goal is to have the truck and trailer positioned so you can look out by spinning the camera around to the driver's side and it makes life a lot easier when reversing. Drivers in real life and of course in American Truck Simulator generally prefer to use the non-blindside reversing. Uh, it just makes life so much nicer and a lot easier to control as well. So let's try and reverse here. And let's see what we can do. Even though technically I should be looking on the other side, we can try to get this spun around a bit so far on our good side. And now we can see that we're going to be on the blind side. We're going to want to look over to the other side and see where the trailer is cutting. I don't think I've lined this up very well. Uh, and I've also got to remember that I'm using simple automatic and uh, it is very different than what I'm used to. You can use exterior camera to cheat as much as you want, but be very careful because you do not want to jackknife the trailer. I'm getting very close and uh, not really doing this as professionally as I would like. But now that we're getting very close, luckily I have not hit anything. 
Uh, so now that we're very close, why don't we go ahead and move forward a little bit and realign. Realigning the truck is a very important task and something that it, you should not take lightly. You can take as many attempts as you want at trying to get it in. It's better to get the trailer lined up better so you can have it makes your life a lot easier and it keeps things a lot neater as well and it's good practice to actually have uh, the truck properly lined up instead of going the other way now i'm going to try and basically force a, a proper side reverse here by uh, putting the trailer purposely a little bit more to my blind side and then turning back so i can actually see where i'm going uh looks it already gives us an a notification if we want to skip the parking but I do not want to do that. I am definitely more on the building side of the spot. I am indeed. I don't know if it will accept it. Um, I'd have to realign properly. And this is what I was talking about. You don't want to just try and cheap out. Properly align is a good thing. Now they are pretty lenient, which is good. So they do accept this. So we're going to shut off the truck and we're going to hit T. That will decouple the trailer. When it comes to our price and the XP, we've got 60 experience points out of the 200 to get to level one. So then the task continues and all we do is just keep taking some deliveries until we level up. Another important note is that at this point, the bank will send you an email saying, need money, we can help. And down in the bottom right hand corner, the bank symbol is now available to be pressed. And if we press it, we will see that we can borrow $130,000. You also notice that truck dealers have now been unlocked as well. So you can navigate and because we chose a Western star as our preferred truck design, they gave us one out of Stocktown already. And if we wanted to, we could go visit that dealer. We can't buy online until we own at least three trucks. It does give a pop up just in case. Even after just doing two deliveries, this is where the decision point comes up. You can go the bank route where you're taking a fairly substantial loan or you can continue with quick jobs for a little bit. Either way, that is how you get started with the campaign or career mode in American Truck Simulator. And now let's look at how to do the creative mode. To set up the creative or sandbox mode in ATS, we need to install one free mod from the Steam Workshop. So go up to your community tab in the Steam client and select workshop. From here, go to the search icon and select American Truck Simulator. With that selected, you should be greeted with the American Truck Simulator Home Community Workshop. Go to the search box and type in money and XP cheat. A list of results will be shown and there are quite a few, but I like the money and XP cheat jumpstart by Oliver. I found this mod to be highly reliable throughout many game updates, and I like the way that you can choose how much XP you get for completing a delivery. So if you have not subscribed to it already, you will see a green subscribe button down here. Since I have already subscribed to it, it says subscribed. So click on it. It will download within Steam. And once it has downloaded within Steam, go ahead and start American Truck Simulator. When you launch American Truck Simulator, you will be greeted with the launch pad. This is something I haven't actually talked about yet, so I'll go over it very quickly. At the top, you can select your profile if you have multiple. The middle section is where you continue that selected game. And along the bottom, we have some other handy tools. With the save selected, we want to go to Mod Manager. When selected, you will see a master list of mods installed, so you can see that the money and XP cheat is here, along with a list that is currently empty on the right-hand side, which is your active mods list. To enable the mod, you can do it in three ways. First option is select the mod and then hit this arrow to move it over. That will move it to the active mod session. Moving it back obviously disables the mod. You can double click on the mod and it will move into the active mods. And the final way, if you want to move every mod you have, or if you only have one, move it over in one button, click the double arrow button. So let's move the mod into the active mods list and go ahead and confirm changes down in the bottom. From here, let's continue game and I'll show you how it works in ATS. Now that we're back in the home page of your profile, let's go down to job market and we'll go to quick job and you will notice something right off the bat. Every job in the list is at least $250,000. This is where this mod shines and how the creative mode can be made. What I highly recommend is that you select the shortest jobs possible, gain a lot of money, and for the first delivery, gain a bunch of XP. That way you can unlock and purchase any other truck that you want very quickly. So for today, let's select the grain from Reading to Sacramento, and I'll show you at the delivery point how this mod really works. So as you pull up to your delivery point, go ahead and stop on the green icon. And you will notice in the delivery options screen, 
the XP values are very large. For the first delivery, I highly recommend selecting where do you need it. This gives you the most XP and should take you well above level 30 or at least level 30. Level 30 is almost the golden level as it unlocks pretty much everything in the game. After your first delivery, you can choose to either take the let's play it safe or in all honesty, just skip the delivery. That way you only get the large amount of money, but not all the unnecessary XP. So let's go ahead and select where do you need it and park this trailer. Once you reverse your trailer, go ahead and hit T. It will decouple and give you the overview screen. Now in the overview screen, you can see that we've received over $250,000 and over 200,000 XP. That has shot our level all the way up to 43, which is well and truly enough to unlock everything. It will give you a screen for the skill points as you've just unlocked a ton of skill points, but I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. And you can tell from your home screen that the skills points and emails are starting to pop off a little bit because you've just unlocked everything in the game. And with that, we're at the point where we're ready to expand our American Truck Simulator save, and I'll show you that in part three of this Getting Started series. So if you have any questions about what I've talked about today, feel free to put them down in the comments. Keep an eye out here on the channel for the third part of the Getting Started series. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.